It's the concluding rendezvous with the Butchen family. They gave us the privilege of entering their personal world, shared with us intimate moments of their lives, enabled us to see them as human beings. And what we carry are enduring images of civility, humor, and deep, unwavering love. It's also a special occasion tonight, a legend turned 61. And even though Amitabh dislikes the word superstar and icon, we know he quietly and gracefully is one. Vijaya Shweta Abhishek Amita Bachchan. Just let your thoughts, your dreams unfold. Let's talk of love, of tales untold. Speak so I can see your soul. Just needed time to spend with the family and children. Unfortunately, when I did take the break, they'd already reached the stage where they didn't want to see me. They were adults, though. Yeah. My daughter was in university, uh, my son was finishing school, and but uh, even those moments that I did spend when they were grown up were, were just wonderful moments. And then, when you'd almost just discovered Shweta, it was time for her to get married? Yeah. Were you I reluctant was. to let her go? I was. She wasn't. When you met uh, Nikhil from the renowned Nanda family, like most girls, uh, Shweta, did you know instantly that this is the man I'm going to marry? Yeah. Yes. Where did you meet? I was made to meet him by uh, very close family friends, Abu and Sandeep. They knew his family and they knew my family and they thought, I don't know what they thought. But they made me meet him and we chatted and we clicked. He had come to um, Bombay for a wedding. Mm. I was on my vacation from college. Did you date? No. Never went on a date with him? No. I just knew him 10 days before he proposed to me. So it was very fast. You said yes immediately? <laughs> no, I, I, I thought for five minutes. Five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, were all, we were all there together. It was New Year's. and. I think his parents spoke to my parents, and then Nikki decided that he'd want to ask me himself. Mm. I said yes. And then we were married two months later. Great. <laughs> Amici, you, you found it harder than Jaya to let go. Why? I, I just felt that uh, it was a little too early, too premature for her to get married. And the fact that just when she was reaching uh, an interesting age of uh, an association with me or with the rest of the family, uh, we were just packing her off. And I've always had this, uh, this feeling about not wanting to let go of the daughter. It is a complex emotion a, a parent goes through, I mean. Is it complex for you as well? Um, I think when finally Papa um, accepted the idea that I was getting married, there was no one more enthusiastic or more involved than he was. And everything happened so fast. You know, it, it really hit me on the day I was leaving my home. I would not be a little girl anymore. And I wouldn't be staying with my parents. It hit me then. It's more like you, you stop being a girl and you become a woman. Abhishek, you were letting go of your playmate, your victim, <laughs> <laughs> and your sister, I mean. I was fine with it. But it was sad because, yes, you also knew that, uh, that you know, she was not going to be there to get a haircut. Or <laughs> tied to a pole. But um, happy also because then I got somebody like Nikki to be an elder brother, which I never had, it's and like he is. You went to see uh, drop her off to Delhi as yeah. the brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that was the time it hit me actually. Mm -hmm. As per custom, the brother goes escorts the sister back to a to a new house, 
Nikki's entire family was there, and I was the only uh, person representing the Bachchan family. Anyway, they had whatever customary games they play, and then at the end, uh, she came and she gave me a present, saying, this is from my family to you. And I said, wait a second, you're my family. Yeah. You know, you're my sister, what do you mean? That was it, but that was the last time. Well, whenever we travel, we were in boarding school together, college together, Abhishek always took care of all the tickets mm. and the boarding passes, and it was all given to him for some odd reason. And I think when we reached the airport... Somebody from the office said that uh, this is Shwetananda's ticket or something. Yeah, and, something like that, And yeah. took the ticket from his hand, and he was very upset. He said, I can't believe this. She's not Shweta Bachchan any longer. <laughs> it actually took us quite a lot of time to get used to him yes, meeting Nanda. Yes. Did you feel sorry about all the times you bullied her? Never. <laughs> Never regretted them. Not at all. <laughs> now, you have Navya and Agastya. Yes. Do they know who their grandfather is? Yeah, I think they know. They're aware. I think Navya is a, uh, a lot more aware of the fact because I think she genuinely feels that all this attention should be coming her way than yeah. <laughs> mine. In fact, in the break, she was here and saying, why can't I be on this show? <laughs> What sort of games do you play with them? For some reason, Navya feels that I am short of staff in my office. <laughs> and uh, she insists on uh, helping me out, as she says. Take notes, take care of all my letters, uh, take care of the phone calls. Before I came here, she gave me three pages of notes, which she felt I should go through. And what were but, the notes saying? Uh, they say nothing. They're just little scribbles. <laughs> oh, that is... Because she can't write yet. Do you horse around with, your, with these grandkids? Yeah, you'd be surprised that they're beyond that age. They're beyond, <laughs> oh, that's too... It's shocking to see children of this generation, the way they behave and the way they talk. It's like they're already in university or something. There's no child talk, you know. There's no kuddly do or puddly do or whatever it Uchi is. Puchi. Puchi. No, 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 nothing no. at all. You get reprimanded for it. Like? I'm not a child. What was it that she said in the car after she saw Mumbai say, I'm she said, I think Mabu's acting like he finally knows his mind. <laughs> this is five-year-old Navya saying, yeah. I think Mamu's acting as though he finally knows his mind. Very, very entertaining, very engrossing. The sad part is that they're in a different city and you, you pine for them. And you, whenever we want to uplift our lives and uplift our emotions and feelings, so that's where we go. We go in their company and the whole world changes. When do personal dreams and ambitions get transferred from the self to the sun? I would like all my personal dreams, my desires, my unfulfilled mm. wishes uh, to be transferred to him in a positive, successful mode. And I hope that he grows bigger than what his parents were and are and ever shall be. Uh, Jiaji, you've seen uh, Amit Ji struggle when he used to say to you that nobody wants me, I'm a flop actor. And you've seen Abhishek struggle. How different is it? Well, I feel a lot more for Abhishek than I did for him. Because I'm his mother. He mm. came out of me. Have they handled it di differently? You know, I, I never felt that he was not successful. Who? Amitji, I never felt. 
But it is a different struggle in a sense. I'll tell you, the, uh, the honest truth is that there is a, an economic difference, mm. all right? I had to, you know, uh, get that success because my livelihood depended on that. It, I hope that I'm able to keep up uh, a certain economic profile so that my son doesn't have to go through it. Uh, there are a lot of purists who think that uh, I'm doing wrong, who feel that, uh, no, uh, a son should be given um, his uh, opportunity to struggle. He should not be pampered. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that because I feel that uh, uh, if I have brought him in this world and if I have the capacity to give him what I want him to have, I will give it to him. And I care a damn about what uh, the world thinks, how a son needs to be brought up. He's my son, he's not their son. Mm -hmm. I, I hear a lot of accusations, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't have a godfather like Abhishek, or I don't have uh, an Amitabh Bachchan like uh, Abhishek has as a father, and therefore I have to struggle. And I would like to see where Abhishek would go if he didn't have an Amitabh Bachchan in his life, and so on and so forth, very justifiable. I was saying the same thing when I joined this industry. But I would like to see when their own sons and their own children will grow up, whether they still have that same attitude. Maybe they're different. I'm this way. I would want to do this for my son and for my children. If a film is not a hit, who suffers more? He or you both? We all suffer. We all suffer. From the producers, distributors to the <laughs> audience, to us, we all suffer. You've acted with both of them. Who are you more comfortable with? <laughs> Ma. You acted with Papa? I didn't act with him. Oh, yeah. Why? You ask any actor what it's like to stand in the frame with Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, I think you'll get the similar response. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're grown up and working, how much influence do your parents have on you? Total influence. On every aspect of your life? Every aspect of my life. Jaiji, you can tell him, don't do this film? I can tell him, of you course. Can, tell him. can you tell him, I don't like this guy, you don't have him as a friend? Yes. You can. Can you tell him, this girl may be nice, but she's not the right girl for you? Yes. I can tell him. Okay. I don't know whether he's going to listen, but I think most of the time he listens. Parents have a very uncanny knack of always being correct. Yeah. And it's something a child will never accept because they want to branch out by themselves and prove to their parent that they have also become wise and they know how to take care of themselves. Sure. A child doesn't like to admit it, but your parents are always correct. Jaiji, have you given more of yourself to your children or to your husband? To my husband. <laughs> well, I must tell you, the other day at the Rotary uh, Awards, uh, Jaiji said to me, um, oh, you know, Amiji said to me that if I can uh, reach home by 2 o'clock, we can have lunch together. So she said, but it's already past 1, and I don't know if I'll make it in time. And she left in a rush. And I looked at her, and I said, this much eagerness, it's like you're going to have lunch with a boyfriend. You know, not yeah, with a husband of 30 years. Because normally I'm not home for lunch. Hardly. Why was it so important for you? Why not? He's my husband. I'd love to have lunch with him. You know... G.I.G., I see you very often, always gauging his, his mood, always tuned in to how he's re going to react or how he's going to feel. But I think that's what's expected of, of marriage and companionship and lifelong companionship. Mm. I think that's what the meaning is all about. We have chosen to spend the rest of our lives together till the end of our lives. That's the least that you can expect from both of us. Shweta, what have you learnt from watching your parents in, in their marriage that you'd like to bring into your own? So much, it's so hard to say. A sense of respect for each other, duty, and to stand, stand by the person, you, the man you're married to, through thick and thin, and try and be a strength rather than a weakness. Has your relationship with your mother changed since you became a mother? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I think I, I used to take her a lot for granted that she'd be there every day when I came back from school for lunch, and she was. Mm. And today when I look back and I think at the time, you know, that time of her life, when she was so young and, mm. 
you know, husband was out achieving all these big things and she could really have, you know, she didn't have to be at home every day, mm -hmm. supervising our homework, putting us to bed. She could have just left us to governesses and, you know, really enjoyed that time of her life. And I think it's shaped my brother and me. We are what we are today because of her and of her being such a big part of our life. Mm -hmm. Almost 35 years, umpteen hits, awards <coughs> and adulation later. Tell me, Amici, what's left for uh, a man to achieve who's already achieved everything? I, uh, I've never looked at success in this manner. I have always believed that I would, I would like to do better than what I have done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to paint. I would like to learn music. I would like to play an instrument. I would like to learn different languages. Uh, there are so many things to do. There's not enough time, obviously, you know. Your life is almost coming to an end. 61 is the halfway mark, so there's lots of time. You put, you're going to make me live till 120? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but anyway, on the eve of your 61st birthday, there's a lot to celebrate and a lot to honor. For me, as an old friend, more than the star, I salute a man of exceptional dignity humble in success, and never ruthless. A man who weathered many storms, but stood tall. Very tall. Thank you. It's been quite a ride, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Hopefully there's more to come. Hopefully. A birthday is also time to pay tributes to the ones who fill your world. This nucleus created by you, your wife beside you, your daughter and son. What has each one individually brought into your life? I'll have to start with my parents. I've lost my father and I cannot forget uh, his presence in my life. And I cannot forget the, the wonderful combination of him and my mother. Poetry and, uh, and the poet and feel truly blessed that I was born to them. I'm gracious to God for giving me a wife like Jaya. What has Jaya brought to your life? Stability, um, warmth. Uh, when the woman of the house uh, is out of the house for a while, you may feel a sense of uh, freedom, a freedom and happiness <laughs> that you're, gosh, thank God. It's, it's, uh, she's not there and now I can do what I want to do and I can have a blast. But you would never ever do that. And uh, very surprisingly, that when the woman of the house returns to the house, the house starts smelling differently. You know, suddenly there's a fragrance and flowers will appear and the furniture will be in, in the proper place. And it's something about, you know, the lady of the house. That is her nest. She left her father, her, she, she left her family and came and built this nest for this family to be comfortable and cozy and she will look after it and she will give her life for it. What did she bring to Amitabh? She, she allowed me to live in that nest. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest gift that she ever gave me uh, were these two. They are the joy of my life and they are my emotional strength, they are my physical strength. 
even if she was to not give me anything else from now onwards, I'm just satisfied and happy that she gave me Shweta and Mushi. We love this company. We love this show because they are with us. We love the fact that we're going to go home and we're going to talk about it and laugh about it. We're distressed with the fact that Shweta has to go back in a couple of days, but that is life. What is Shweta brought for you? Shweta is the first bearer of uh, this generation. I've never been able to say no to her. Knowing this fact, and she has been very controlled and uh, quite conservative with her, with her demands. And I found a sea change in, in the moment from when she was just my daughter to what she has become now. And she has now been an exceptional wife and I hope that my son is happy with her and I hope that my son-in-law is happy with her. Abhishek is, uh, is my friend and we will discuss things, everything under the sun. At times we'll use abusive language quite freely <laughs> and I'm not such a Puritan either uh, to feel ashamed about it. Uh, I knew, as I said earlier on, if I ever had a son, that's the way I would want this relationship. I feel he's, um, he's a very sensitive person. He's extremely emotional. He is extremely gullible. But in no way is, are those qualities going to deter him in his life. Because I would rather have a gullible, sensitive, emotional human being than a cheap, cunning fellow. And for me, that's enough. I don't really want this to sound like a confessional, but uh, yes, I think it's the greatest family to have. God bless. The lights have gone off. Goodness. Happy birthday. I made a wish.